I'm aware issue 6 already came out, but I'm a little behind since I've gone on a handful of breaks through school. So I'm back with issue 5. This issue starts with Poison Ivy having a nightmare of one she got powers, being strapped to a bed by Woodrow, who's experimenting on her. Saying how this was the day Poison Ivy was born, in front of her is a scary figure of Batman, who's trying to tell her that she's run out of road and it's not too late. She can still stop this. While well, Rudu is talking to Poison Ivy as if she's just a guinea pig. Bam is the side of her subconscious trying to tell her that she still has human in her. She still has morality. While well, Woodrow is on the side of her just saying that she is nothing, just a pawn in the game of the green. Poison Ivy wakes up from her dream and still behind the wheel of her van, driving to Woodrow's location. Her hallucination of Batman is still next to her, still trying to reason with her, saying that this might end up her death. With there now being noticed that Pamela no longer views herself as the villain of the story, instead Woodrow is. Poison Ivy, while she's driving, sees an hallucination of trees that were once in this area, saying that they are all cut down not long ago. She also says that her virus and sickness is growing, saying that she has very little time left. She manages to find Woodrow's warehouse where he's hiding. Poison Ivy walks around the warehouse, making note that everything seems to be exactly the same when she was experimented on. She grabs the scalpel to hide it behind her back, believing it will come in handy sooner or later, only to be faced by Jason Woodrow himself, aka the Floronic Man, aka the Cedar, aka another name I can't pronounce he went by for like two issues in the 90s. He's gone by law names, something that Poison Ivy herself even says, saying that she only calls him the Green Man due to the fact that it's a lot more or less obvious, as she thinks Floronic Man and Cedar are kind of stupid. Woodrow, of course, attacks her with her reacting by stabbing him inside the, the head with a scalpel. But it doesn't really do anything to him. Pamela starts to hallucinate again over old memories, how she was a villain, someone who was in all purposes evil, and was actually the one who inspired Woodrow to becoming one himself. Or more of one. I suppose he kind of already was one for human experiments, but they did volunteer for it, so I'm not entirely sure if that makes him evil or not. But he was well aware that they could probably die. Her hallucination of Batman keeps on helping her, saying that she needs to dug out of the way. But he does end up catching her and taunts her about not being able to fight back anymore as she's really just caught up in her own hallucinations. But Pamela didn't come without a plan. As he taunts her, she infects him with the llama mushrooms, and due to him having ha still have a connection to the green, it instantly kills him, or it looks like it kills him. As she thinks he's dead, but as Pamela believes to have won, she sees that he heals almost as fast as he died, and uses his power to force her to hold the scalpel to her own neck, saying that his abilities actually kind of contradict the limb and mushrooms. Instead, they actually made him stronger. Which Poison Ivy refers to as Betrayal of the Mushrooms. Honestly, I love this issue. However, I do think that the hallucination of Batman would have been better if it was Harley Quinn instead. But I and her, of course, also have a very complicated history. So I suppose that also makes perfect sense. But I would have wished maybe more of Harley Quinn. As well, she didn't appear in the issue, she does appear on the cover. Which I feel as if it's kind of cover bait to the fact that you're not actually in the issue itself. And that's it. Like always, please like, subscribe, and see you guys next time. Bye.